Hey, I had uh, Pastor Arthur Palowski from Canada with us last year. And I, and I want to bring up him again because I read a great story about him. And it goes like this. Arthur's wife gave birth to their son. Um, and when he was born, uh, he was born with his organs all discombobulated where his heart was actually on the other side of his chest. And after an attempted operation, doctors told, told them, he and his wife, that there is nothing they could do, that he was about to die very soon, this newborn baby of Arthur and his wife. And Arthur did not react well to this news at all. He basically came within an inch of, a, of a, an inch of going crazy, asking God, why and how can this be happening to his son and to his family? And he ended up having a dream one night that turned everything around, where Arthur basically saw the light and comfort in God's majesty and sovereign control. He got to the point where he accepted God's will for his life. And even though he prayed that his son would survive, he now accepted Jesus fully in his heart promising that whether his son lived or died, that he would continue being a servant of God. He was reminded of Abraham and Isaac, where Abraham was told to sacrifice his son, where Abraham followed blindly, even though it was against every fiber of his body to do so. Abraham was willing to actually kill his son, thinking that God could, res could resurrect him uh, in order to have the many descendants that God promised him initially. So Arthur learned from Abraham to accept God's will no matter what. And as I said, whether his son lived or died, he would serve the Lord. He made that promise. So what happened shortly after that was that the doctors called in Arthur and his wife for an emergency meeting. But it wasn't an emergency in a bad way. It was an emergency celebrating a miracle. Because the doctors told them that somehow the organs realigned in his body properly. And there was absolutely no explanation whatsoever on how it happened. They deemed it impossible to occur, but yet it did. To the point where Arthur now has a healthy teenage son living a full life. So God did answer Arthur's prayer of life for his son, but only after Arthur saw the light and gave his life to God. I went through this similar experience with my son Tyler. Unfortunately, people that are addicted to drugs have oftentimes more than one OD that they thankfully recover from. And it was no different with my son. There was one evening when Tyler collapsed outside in 20 degree weather to be discovered the next morning. He was non-responsive, having literally every organ in his body fail. The doctors later told us that the only reason he was still alive was because of the freezing weather slowing down his metabolism. He then was hooked up, Tyler was, to a machine that, filled, that filtered his um, blood out of his body and then back in after getting oxygenated because his lungs were not functioning. The odds of him surviving were incredibly low. But because of our belief in God and prayer, I knew he'd recover, which he did, after learning how to eat and walk again. It, it was incredibly brutal on so many levels, but our faith in God is what saved his life, to give him another year of life in which he learned more about Jesus Christ solidifying his final destination. The book says, whoever believes in Jesus will never perish but have eternal life. Now, the next time Tyler had an overdose, it, it felt so different to me. It felt that it was the end this time. And naturally, a parent will second guess and think, well, maybe we should have fought harder but from what the doctors were saying, it seemed to be over. Uh, we later found out that even though we expected a cocaine overdose, it was fentanyl, something that we and many people were not even familiar with, never heard of it. But unfortunately, as many people know, 
uh, nowadays, fentanyl is a death sentence. I remember trying to comfort Tyler as he lay unconscious in the um, hospital bed, believing and hoping that he could still hear us talk to him, even though he could not respond. I told him that we love him. I said, Tyler, we love you, and that it was okay. I told him to go to God. Go to God. Now, now back to Arthur's situation and the dream that he had right before it seemed that his newborn son was about to die. God told him that you cannot save your son. You alone cannot save him. God said that he alone has that power, just as it was with Jesus. Nobody could have saved his life from dying on the cross except his father, God. He told Arthur that I could have saved my son, Jesus, but I didn't. Why didn't I? Because of you, he said, and everyone else that walks this planet. The suffering and pain had to take place for the greater good of all. And that's how I feel to a degree with my son, Tyler. That his death changed my family members and friends' point of view, especially mine, bringing us all closer to Jesus Christ. This radio show, for instance, resulted from my son dying, along with a prison ministry. And I wouldn't have been doing any of it if it wasn't for my son Tyler's death. Uh, and, and it would, and it would, um, and, and would I like? To have my son back? Of course I would. But not in the condition that he was. Addicted to drugs and going through so much internal anguish, pain, and suffering. Some of my other family members wanted him back no matter the cost, under any circumstances. But I always said no. He's at peace now. And he's with God now. Why would you want him back just to have him back? No. It's the quality of life. I don't want my son tortured down here psychologically and physically he, he got it he, he got in over his head and he couldn't get out I don't want him to return to that I believe that as long as he believed in Jesus Christ as he did it, it's time unfortunately to go and it's okay to go and I know that sounds cruel but sometimes death isn't the worst option Sometimes it's actually a solution because we don't know what ugly, evil future events may have occurred. I had a friend going through the same exact thing that I was going through, trying to deal with the son's addiction, and we both arrived at the same point where we basically told God we're all out of bullets. We have no idea what else to do and that it's totally in your hands. Whatever happens... I trust you that you have your reasons. My friend's son survived and mine didn't. So what am I to do? Turn on God? No, never. Not in a million years I won't do that. Because if I turn on God, I turn on myself and my family and especially Tyler and everything and everybody who I loved so much who died earlier. Just like Arthur coming to grips with his reality and just like Abraham coming to grips with his, so did I. And hopefully millions of other people who have gone through similar situations. I, I say at the end of every show that all roads lead back to God, and they truly do. Because without God, there's no hope. With, with God, there's unlimited hope. As the Bible tells us to comfort each other with the fact that we will see our loved ones again. A comfort that can be held by believers and unfortunately not held by disbelievers because if you don't believe in God and Jesus and redemption and salvation and heaven then you're just left holding the bag without a solution to your problem or crisis the Bible says comfort yourself and others knowing that you'll see him or her again and that's exactly what I do when I say all roads lead back to God and Tyler, we love you, we'll see you again. As I said before, I'm not talking to Tyler directly. I'm talking to myself and everybody who lost loved ones to encourage all of us and to comfort all of us knowing that we will see them again. 
We need to celebrate that fact. It's the only medicine, the only solution, the only hope that we have, the only thing that works, that puts our mind and heart to rest in order to give us peace. So thank God for God. Hey, I had a past.